Hello, I'm Joseph, and today I want to talk about multi-platform Compose. I've, I've tried to work with this last year, and it was just too much in a rough state. Now, in what I'm about to show, I think it's in a pretty good spot, specifically if you already have a native Android application that's programmed with Jetpack Compose for the UI layer, and you're looking to move it to desktop. Um, if you're patient, you're willing to wait for when iOS is put into stable because right now it's an alpha it's been stuck in alpha for most obvious reasons they're located in ukraine they had an office in russia that had to be closed because of the war pushed them back uh some time because obviously you got to hire people and you got to get them introduced to the project so i can't blame for that but it's taken longer than expected to get ios ratified and um but it's really really close there's just some gaping holes that i want to talk about with multi-platform compose so like I said, if, if you already have an Android app and you want to move it to desktop, I think it's in a pretty good spot. If you want to start from scratch, it's really, really rough compared to something like Flutter. Um, so I, I do, I've been trying to slowly kind of move over the stuff from a Flutter app I'm building. And the main reason why is because I'm spending so little time with my UI. I'm spending more time with the backend logic stuff. And it would be nicer to have Kotlin on hand rather than just trying to constantly work with Dart. Uh, it does have a weaker type system and stuff like that, but it, there's, there's errors that are happening in between that I really wish I can leverage. And there's some packages I want to pull from uh, Kotlin side of stuff that I, that I can't really technically pull with like Dart. Anyways, I'm going to show the, the Flutter version first. So this is just a Windows, Linux, Mac, iOS, and Android. I've tested on all these different platforms. It is a... Um, it's an app to be used on all those and work resp responsively. Where is my window? Okay, here we go. So here's like the desktop view of my login page. And then it, you know, goes to, you know, whatever. Uh, it has like login, login stuff. You can, you know, try to register, blah, 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 that type of thing. So it's really quick. It works great. It actually runs better than the native Android app that I was trying to build out for my Kindle Fire HD. Sorry, my Kindle Fire 7 from 2019. Because that's a really old um cpu chucked into like a more modern design but it's just a crappy crappy um, tablet and flutter was actually running better uh for the same material ui like when i clicked into these fields and that email gets a little bit smaller there's a lot of jank that was happening on native android jetpack compose that would is not happening when i ran it in flutter so i thought that was really cool that flutter has moved so far along that they're finally getting some better performance marks for that Anyways, that's that. And it's really nice to have that developer workflow where the holy grail of it is to get your app to run. And then let's say you need to go ahead and change email to something else. So let's say change this to username. Then go ahead and save this and then get it to show there automatically. And let's say if I change this while I have data in here or state that it continues to stay, it should have stayed. I'm not sure why it left. Okay, maybe on Mac it's an issue, but on other ones it would, it would stay there. It wouldn't actually change. So... I thought that was really, really cool. And you have things like errors that you can kind of customize and stuff like that. You have a whole Material 3 uh, toolkit at, at your hand. Um, it also has the iOS variant for that as well. So I th that was, that's like really, really cool to have that developer workflow. You can include packages even while it's running as long as it doesn't need to be recompiled. Uh, so that was also really nice. Get SQLite in here. It took me like 30 minutes. All I did was add my uh, go to my pub spec, add in uh, this stuff here. Uh, the, this for a comment for Linux and, and Windows. And then in my database service layer, uh, all I did was include all, an if and else, or just if here. So I, I'll swap the database factory to use FFI or not. That's it. That's all I really did. Um, Jetpack Compose is a very different story. So let me go ahead and close this here. In that, um, like, unless you have a Mac and you have Fleet, which is their like new editor that they're trying to work on, Right here, uh, it's it's a it's really hard to get that workflow at all, and so I'm going to show you what Fleet is currently showing for an option, which is I can preview in their little preview window that UI. So I've been porting over it from Flutter to multi-platform Compose, and I have a responsive UI just like I did on that multi-platform post. Now, unfortunately, previews are not interactive, so I can't sit here and type into stuff or anything else. I literally need to run it. Running it isn't that bad. It does start up pretty quick, but I would need to set up pages to um, 
to quickly be able to jump to, to start it up with the app, uh, to have some way uh, to interact with it. But the preview is just a really good step. The problem is though, is that again, this is only Mac OS and only on fleet. If you're using Idea Editor or Ultimate Community, using JetBrains, um, or sorry, Android Studio, preview doesn't work at all. So this little icon here does not work at all with multi-platform Compose. It works with Android Jetpack Compose and it works with Desktop Compose. With Desktop Compose, it only works on outer functions. If you have a function inside of a class, that then also doesn't work, but it will work for Fleet with macOS. So if they can get this to go across all different platforms, that's really good. But for now, you're going to be most productive on a Mac computer that can preview this with Fleet Editor which I think is a really tall ask um, for doing desktop apps. Uh, I'm going to introduce a couple of things I've run into so far when working on this, other than the preview not working, obviously. I've moved over to Mac, um, and I'm still trying to decide whether I want to definitely choose multi-platform Compose as a de facto. Um, first is I wanted to add a SQLite database, just like I showed in my Flutter. So I went to my, uh, my build Gradle. And by the way, I hate, I hate Gradle, I hate Maven, I hate, I hate all these build systems. They are overly complex. JetBrains is working on a solution for this. Um, I don't know if they're ever going to go with it, but it's supposed to greatly simplify it to what you had saw with Flutter, where you're not dealing with all of this programming logic stuff or Kotlin script to, to work with Gradle. So I, I used uh, SQL Delight. This is the only thing that's available for a multi-platform. That's going to be important because... While you can access the JVM for desktop, it's great for desktop apps. Um, when you want to use an Android and you want to use your UI on uh, native or iOS, then unfortunately, you, everything from the JVM side of stuff, everything from Android side of stuff, they can't be used together. And you need to find something that works in between all these. So SQL Delight is one of them. Gives me that database. So I have a driver for Android, driver for native, which is iOS, a driver for um, desktop. This is one issue I had. So in their documentation for SQL Delight, they talk about adding the source for JVM dependencies. And I was like, I don't see JVM dependencies here at all. So let me go ahead and add it. I'm going to add in JVM dependencies. It's going to auto-complete for me. Or sorry, JVM main dependencies. And then you would implement it there. And so I did that. And uh, when I went to my desktop, uh, thing here it wouldn't recognize that this was imported at all but it's there it's in my jvm dependencies it's because it's renamed up here to desktop so you know i'm following the sql delight but the project that you make for multi-platform compose is going to call this desktop not jvm main so that was you know one thing i ran into i was trying to get migrations to work and so i need to add this and then exactly where does this go where i think it goes here i don't know I haven't fully finished this implementation just yet, but you kind of get my ideas. Like, I think it goes here. I'm not quite sure. I added the, the folders that I was trying to follow through for the multi-platform thing. Um, then you need to add a base undefined uh, expected class of the database factory, which is was that simple little if statement that I had in Flutter. But then I need to implement for each platform. So for JVM, when I finally got it to work for which is desktop uh i just copy the code that they give you in the the thing here where is that yeah just copy the code down here so they give you one for jvm to copy and paste in there native copy and paste it here and then for android so i copy and pasted this i did that and what i did was i want to open that let me pull first quit and i went to main i just checked it into my main so I put it here and I kept getting this, you know, create expected class and common module. I'm like, what is, what does this mean? It's because my package isn't the base or the root. So I end up just making this here, putting it in here. Cause if I try, if I actually tried to put this in here and I click this little thing, it puts it in like some build folder. Yeah. It puts it into build whatever, like it was putting in the wrong folder. It wasn't even putting to where it needed to be. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, so it took a lot longer than I wanted just to get a database in here 
versus Flutter. And it's because the documentation change around the stuff. It's, it's, it's a moving target. I understand that part. But again, it's very, very flush, frustrating for that. And um, going back to the documentation, this is for multi-platform. So there's Kotlin multi-platform. And then there's Compose multi-platform. So this is not specifically Compose multi-platform. It's just Kotlin multi platform, which is why the JVM is probably referenced and why it's fine in this context. But again, it's just, you know, just things that can become a, a little bit of a pain in the butt. Another thing I've run into is um, pixel density. So in my app, I have DP here. This doesn't work. Um, it gives me back the actual PX. So um, I literally can just do this and it's going to be the same thing. And I, I don't know why, maybe it's a bug currently. But this is also not just a desktop issue. It's replicated in Android. So for whatever reason, the overlay for .tp does not work properly. Maybe it's a bug or something. I'm not quite sure, but I have to import .tp here as a, as a unit. But it doesn't actually give me the .tp side. Maybe I'm, I'm doing something wrong, but I basically had to take the density and divide it against the actual width of pixels to give me that expected density of .dp. Flutter already handles this for me automatically. I don't have to worry about it for Linux, Windows, or Mac, high resolution or not. They already support those scenarios for, for all these different devices and platforms. Here, it's just it's consistently just giving me pixels. It's not giving me display pixels. Um, that's more or less it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm right now I'm trying to implement navigation because another thing that is a a problem with multi-platform composes you don't have a navigation uh they give you a set of libraries in their documentation uh where is that navigation here so they give you a set of stuff so you have voyager decompose app aptly x in pre-compose you can pull these in i'm i'm I already use voyager for desktop compose so i'm just going to move forward with that anyways it, it works on all these different platforms and then image and resources this is I'm not sure if this is updated or not. 1.6 gave us shared resources. So I'm, I'm not sure why this is still experimental. Anyways, um, there's that. The other thing is that preview. We used to not be able to accept any parameters, unlike what would be on Jetpack Compose. Um, that now accepts parameters. I don't know exactly what they accept because I haven't worked with uh, with it on here just yet for testing it, but I know now they're supposed to be able to support parameters so you can set things like specific widths for previews. So you have to keep resizing as you as you, as you would expect to. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's, it's okay. It's just really, really rough to keep running into these problems. And their documentation um, is a bit rough. Like, it's... It's okay if you like you read this, but it, it talks nothing about multi-platform compose for like the UI stuff. They're really just trying to get you to understand like, okay, if you're going to use Android stuff, all, all, none of this stuff is going to work in multi-platform compose. And that if you want to access iOS stuff, you know, the Swift UI and UI kit. By the way, um, the default iOS minimal supported version is iOS 15. And the reason for that is that their default implementation is with Swift UI. So if you want UI kit to go back a little further, you need to re-implement that layer that they did with UI kit. It can technically still work. Um, it's just it's a bit a bit of a, a pain and something you have to do on your end because I, I didn't see a UI kit version of that. And uh yeah, that's it. I mean, till then, the best experience you can have is on a Mac machine using Fleet Editor. If you use something like the JetBrains Idea Editor or Android Studio, you're honestly better off just going, making an Android Jetpack Compose app, building your UI for like a tablet that way, then coming back here and pasting it in, and then changing some of the properties because they don't always map one to one, and then getting rid of things of like context and stuff like that, the Android specific things. And uh, that's it. If you guys have any other things you can recommend for this I, I'm, I'm all ears uh, i'm obviously not an expert in any of this stuff here uh i have a little bit more experience in flutter i, I had a, like a flutter versus native script very very long ago it has come a long way since then um but i i really want to, <laughs> to use multi-platform compose it's just in a really rough state in terms of just like just starting from scratch uh 